Hello students, Miss Swanson here, and today we're going to take a look at the properties of ionic compounds. Now I chose this picture here because it shows the crystal structure of an ionic compound, sodium chloride. The crystal structure is very important because it determines some of the other properties of the ionic compounds, and we'll take a look at these properties as we go through the video today. So we have one learning goal to describe properties of ionic compounds. So the first is that they form crystalline solids, or they form crystals. And if we remember, ionic compounds are formed by cations, which are positively charged, and anions, which are negatively charged, attracting towards each other. Now just because a cation and an anion have formed a bond doesn't mean that that cation or anion is no longer positively or negatively charged. They still have that charge and so they're still attracted to other positively or negatively charged things. So if we take a look at sodium chloride, it actually forms a crystal. It forms almost like a block where the positively charged sodium uh, ions are attracted to more chloride ions, not just the one that it originally bonded to and the chloride ions are attracted to other positively charged sodium ions not just the one that it originally attracted to. So in order to describe what's happening here we call the original compounds formula units. So the original sodium and chlorine that came together we call that compound a formula unit. Then each of the formula units can be attracted to other formula units to form the crystal structure. And there's many possibilities for the shape of how this crystal will look. These are just a few of them, and sodium chloride forms one type of crystal, but other ionic compounds will form different types of crystals. So let's take a look at an animation of how these crystals would form. So we start off with the sodium chloride formula unit, and we have other formula units of sodium chloride that will come and be attracted towards that one. The positive charges towards other negative charges, and the negative charges towards other positive charges. This can then become a 3D molecule as more positives are attracted to the negatives and more negatives are attracted to the positives. And this can continue on to form the ionic crystal. So let's take a look at the second characteristic and this is that they are soluble in water. So with these positive and negative charges, they're actually attracted to water. Water has a slightly positive side and a slightly negative side. That slightly negative side is attracted to the positive part of an ionic compound. And so the same thing with the slightly, neg or slightly positive side is attracted to the negative side of an ionic compound. And so when the water is attracted to the positive and negative sides of the ionic compounds, it can actually break up that bond between the positive and negative sides because the positive ion has lots of negative charges surrounding it and the negative ion has lots of positive charges surrounding it. So it no longer needs that other positive or negative charge to balance itself out because it has these water molecules surrounding it. So here's an animation of what would happen. We have one formula unit here of sodium chloride and if we have water attracting we have the positive hydrogen parts that are attracted to the negative chlorine and the negative oxygen or the slightly negative oxygen parts attracted to the sodium uh, part and then these will separate out and more water can come in there to fill in the gaps and now each of those ions is surrounded by either positive or negative charge to balance out their own positive or negative charge. The next characteristic is that they have high melting points and high boiling points. Now what happens when something melts is that you originally have a solid compound and so all of the different formula units are attracted to each other and they form this structure and when something melts it's actually when these formula units start to separate from each other and move independently rather than being together as a block. Now because each of the formula units is attracted to the other formula units very strongly because of those positive and negative charges, it's hard to pull apart the formula units so that they can move independently. So that gives it a high melting point. 
Something similar happens with boiling point, only you're going from these um, formula units moving independently in a liquid to in a gas where they're moving much more quickly and much more independently of each other. So here we have an animation of what happens. We have three formula units that are attracted to each other and it's very difficult to pull them apart because the sodium ion is attracted to the other chloride ions from the other formula units and the chloride ion is attracted to the other sodium ions from the other formula units. So it's very difficult to pull them apart. Eventually though, if the temperature is high enough, you can pull them apart, but that high temperature means that it has a high boiling point and a high melting point. The next characteristic is that they conduct electricity when either melted or particularly when dissolved in water. So if we have just plain old water, it will not conduct electricity because there are no ions moving back and forth. When we have a solid ionic compound, because all the formula units are attracted to each other, none of them are moving around and so we're not going to get electricity conducted either. If we put that um, ionic compound in water and it dissolves, those formula units are now spread out in the water as we saw on the slide about the solubility. Um, they're now spread out and so they can move independently of each other and so each of these ions can now conduct electricity as they move move around. And then finally, ionic compounds are hard, but they're brittle. Because they're, um, the formula units are attracted to each other, you're going to end up with a crystal structure. And when that crystal structure is broken, it's going to be broken along the edges of the formula unit. So it won't be a nice smooth break, but it'll be almost like a crack in the crystal structure. So normally they're attracted to each other so strongly, so it's, they're very hard, but when they break, they break along the edge of the formula unit, which makes them brittle. And so this is how that would happen. So we have one learning goal for today to describe the properties of ionic compounds. If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please rewatch the video, and if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. Alright, that's all for now. Bye-bye.